the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said Sha'banu shahri he said the Sha'ban is my month so the ulama say that in this month we should increase in our benedictions upon him sallallahu alaihi wasallam it is in this month according to the ulama the people of knowledge in which the ayah was revealed in surah al ahzab ayah number 56 inna allaha wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima allahumma salli wa sallim ala sayyidina muhammad the Quran says, "An Nabiyu Aula bil Mu'minina min anfusihim." We quoted this verse last time I was here for the khutbah. That the Quran says that the Prophet ﷺ, his life takes precedence for the believers over their own selves. Now, there's an epidemic that is sweeping across the Muslim Ummah in the Sharq and in the Gharb, from the Kibar and the Sigha, the East and the West, the old and the young. Many, many people are leaving the deen. There's a lot of ridda, a lot of apostasy. Many people, old and young, leaving the religion. And the ulama are scratching their heads, wondering why this is happening. Part of the reason why it's happening is because of a lack of ma'rifah, a lack of knowledge as to who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. And the one that acquaints us with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one that gives us knowledge of Allah, of ma'rifatullah, is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why were the Sahaba so strong in their Iman? Why were they so strong? Why were they so uh, uh, courageous? Why were they so virtuous? It's because they had him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They experienced the transformative nature of the Sunnah of the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Right? So the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, was the means, he was the sabab by which their hearts were made firm on the path. And the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he used to pray, Ya Muqallib al Qulub. Thabit qalbi ala dinik, thabit qalbi ala ta'itik. O turner of the hearts, put my heart firmly. Give strength to my heart. Put my heart firmly upon your path, upon your obedience, and upon your religion. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make our hearts strong upon this path and upon the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam entered into the city of Medina to al-Munawwara, uh, many of the men, obviously, they wanted to... Um, you know, bring him into their homes and to, to house him and take care of him. Abu Ayyub al-Ansari, anhu, one of the great companions of the Prophet sallallahu he took the baggage of the Prophet sallallahu into his own house. So the Prophet said, a man is always with his baggage. So he went into the home of Abu Ayyub al-Ansari. And Abu Ayyub had a two-story home, right? So he put the Prophet sallallahu on the first floor because it's easier for him to come in and out and people are going to visit him and so on and so forth. And then he and his wife, Abu Ayyub, and his wife were on the second floor. And then a few days into the visit of the Prophet ﷺ, uh, it suddenly occurred to Abu Ayyub and his wife that, you know, when we're walking around upstairs, we're actually walking above the head of the Prophet ﷺ. I and mean, who thinks of these things? But the Sahaba have so much adab, have so much comportment, so much love for the Prophet ﷺ, that this was bothering Abu Ayyub and Ansari and his wife. So Abu Ayyub came downstairs and he said, Ya Rasulullah, why don't we switch places? You go here and we'll go down. You go to the second floor. And the Prophet ﷺ said, no, don't worry about these things. And then they would bring food down to him ﷺ. And he would eat from the food. Sometimes it would be leftover food. And the, the plate would be taken back upstairs. And Abu Ayyub and his wife were trying to determine from which side of the dish the Prophet ﷺ would take the food. And they would try to emulate him in that, even in this little tiny meticulous detail. Why? Because they loved him so much ﷺ. And then one time the Prophet sallallahu he did not touch the food at all, right? So Abu Ayyub, he goes downstairs and he says, Ya Rasulullah, what did I do? Did I offend you? What did my wife say to you? Did I say something to you? Right? They're so concerned about breaching adab with the Prophet sallallahu Right? This was, this was something that was on their purview, something that really distressed them. Have I offended the Prophet sallallahu You know when the ayah was revealed in Surah Al-Hujurat, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَغُضُّونَ أَسْوَاتَكُمْ عِنْدَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ إِمْتَحَنَ اللَّهُ قُلُوبَهُمْ لِلتَّقْوَىٰ لَهُمْ مَغْفِرَةٌ وَعَجْرٌ عَظِيمٌ When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in Surah Al-Hujarat, He says, those who lower their voice in the presence of the Prophet sallallahu those are the ones whose hearts Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has tested and tried with taqwa. For them is, is forgiveness and a great reward. After this was revealed, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, he would only speak to the Prophet sallallahu in a whisper. He would only whisper to the Prophet sallallahu because he didn't want to breach adab with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So <clears throat> the, he said, 
you know, did we offend you? You didn't touch your plate of food, Abu Ayyub al-Ansari. And the Prophet sallallahu he said, no, I can't take from this because there's onions in it. And I speak with Jibreel alayhi salam. But this was something that concerned the Sahaba. You know, the same man, Abu Ayyub al-Ansari, many, many years after the passing of the Prophet sallallahu the uh, governor of Medina, Marwan ibn al-Hakam, who would later become the fourth Umayyad caliph, but he was the governor of Medina during this time. He was rock, walking in the roda of the Prophet ﷺ. And he saw an old man who was sitting on the ground in front of the grave of the Prophet ﷺ. And his head was down like this on the ground. <clears throat> and Marwan walks by and he kicks him. And he says, Atadri ma tasna. Do you know what you're doing? And this man looked up and it was Abu Ayyub al-Ansari. The Prophet ﷺ lived in his home for seven months. No one knows their aqidah better than the Sahaba. And he said, don't worry, I'm visiting the Prophet, I'm not visiting a stone. But long after the passing of the Prophet ﷺ, these Sahaba, they had longing, they had shawq, tashweeq for the Prophet ﷺ. When he came into the city of Medina, because we're talking about the Hijrah, there was a rabbi, Abdullah ibn Salam, who later became Muslim, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He said, He said, I could tell by looking at the face of the Prophet, it wasn't the face of a liar. And the Prophet ﷺ had a beautiful face. He was the most physically beautiful of human beings. And he had the best character as well. So much so that Anas ibn Malik, he says, and this is a hadith you'll find in the Shama'il of Imam Abu Isa Tirmidhi rahimahullah ta'ala, that when the Prophet ﷺ, the day of the passing of the Prophet ﷺ, at Salatul Fajr, Anas says we were in prayer, in prayer. So they're facing south. The Qibla from Medina to Al-Manawara is south. And he said the Prophet ﷺ was in the apartment of Aisha and Kafasha Sitara, that he removed the, uh, the curtain. He picked up the curtain and looked at the congregation. And Anna said, I looked at his face, and his face looked like Annahu Waraqatu Mushaf. His face looked like a page of the Quran. So beautiful and full of meanings. And we have to think about this. How did Anas look at his face? He turned his face 90 degrees in the middle of his prayer to look at the face of the Prophet ﷺ. Why did he do that? So oh, he's praying. You shouldn't do that when you're praying. Who knows aqidah better than Sahaba? Did you know Anas ibn Malik studied with the Prophet for 10 years? 10 years. Khadimu Rasulillah. He is the servant of the Messenger of God. Anas ibn Malik. Right? Sometimes we, some of the Shabab, they go to the Muslim majority world for six months. But they come back, we say, oh, he's Shaykh al-Islam now. He studied for six months. Anas ibn Malik studying with the Prophet sallallahu ten years. Why did he look at the Prophet sallallahu Is he worshipping the Prophet sallallahu Astaghfirullah. No. There's a hadith in Bukhari and Muslim. Mutafaqa alayh. In both books that the Prophet sallallahu says, I don't fear shirk for you after me. I don't fear shirk. I fear that you're going to love the dunya more. You're going to have hubba dunya. Why did he look at the Prophet Sallallahu Because he loves the Prophet Sallallahu Because the Prophet Sallallahu is the means of his guidance. He wouldn't be praying if it wasn't for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam. So then Abdullah ibn Salam, he says, I, I saw, I could tell from his face it wasn't the face of a liar. And then he said the first thing the Prophet Sallallahu said was, Afshu salama spread peace, wa ati'imu ta'ama, spread food around, feed people, wa silul arhama, and keep ties uh, of uh, take, keep relational ties, family ties, right? Keep your ties. Wasalu bi wasalu bil layl wa nasu niyam tadkhulu jannah bi salam and pray in the night when others are asleep and you will enter paradise in peace. This was the first spoken words of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. His first sort of command or lecture that he gave to his ummah, to the muha to the muhajirin and the ansar in Medina tul Munawwara. So. One instant with the Prophet ﷺ can change lives. We're talking again about the Hijrah. When he came into the city of Medina, some of the munafiqeen, right? They were mushrikeen, but they were pretending. They paid their, one of their poets named Hassan ibn Thabit. They paid him a large sum of money. And they said to Hassan, you know, when you see Muhammad, write something about him. Denigrate him in poetry. Make fun of him. Ridicule him in a poem. Because the poet, the sha'ir, was feared by the, by the Arabs. If a, po if a poet wrote something about you, if he, if he uh, complimented you, that could stay with you the rest of your life. Even after your death, it would stay in your family. And if he denigrated you, insulted you, that could stay with you for the rest of your life, even after your death. 
So Hassan ibn Thabit, he was waiting by a certain road for the Prophet ﷺ to pass by. And then the Prophet comes by. And Hassan, he takes one glance into his face. One glance, one nadra into the face of the Prophet ﷺ. And then he goes back to his people. And, they, and he says, you can take your money, I don't want it. And then they said, did you make a poem about him? Did you write something? He said, yes. He said, let's hear it. He said, this is what I said. لَمَّا رَأَيْتُ أَنْوَارَهُ سَقَعَتْ وَدَعْتُ مِنْ خِيفَةِ كَفِّي عَلَى بَصَرِي He says, when I saw his lights approaching, I had to cover my eyes. I had to cover my eyes. خَوْفًا عَلَى بَصَرِي Out of fear of losing my eyesight. مِنْ حُسْنِ سُورَتِهِ From the beauty of his form. فَلَسْتُ أَنْذُرُهُ إِلَّا عَلَى قَدْرِي I could scarcely look at him. رُوحٌ مِنَ النُّورِ فِي جِسْمٍ مِنَ الْقَمَرِي A soul from light. A body as if carved out of the moon. كَحِلْيَةٍ نُسِجَتْ مِنَ الْأَنْجُمِ الزُّهْرِي Like a mantle that's woven together with brilliant stars. مُحَمَّدٌ بَشَرٌ وَلَيْسَ كَالْبَشَرِي وَهُوَ يَاقُودَةٌ وَالنَّاسُ كَالْحَجَرِي Muhammad وسلم, is a human being, but he's not like other human beings. He's a diamond and everyone else are stones. He's a human being. قُلْ إِنَّمَا أَنَا بَشْرُ مِثْلُكُمْ يُوحَا إِلَيَّ The Prophet وسلم, is not a demigod. He's not a son of God. He's not half God, half man. He's not a malak. He's not an angel. He's a human being. He's flesh and blood. But he's a great human being. A diamond is also a stone. Isn't it? A diamond is a stone. But compare a diamond to one of these pebbles outside. You'll see the value of it. This is what he's saying. Right? And the Prophet ﷺ, when he heard these words, and Aisha relates that the Prophet actually had a minbar in the masjid for Hassan ibn Thabit, that he would go and he would eulogize the Prophet ﷺ inside the masjid. Poetry about the Prophet ﷺ, praising his qualities, praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet said, Inna Allah yu'ayyidu Hassan bi ruhil qudus. That indeed the Holy Spirit has helped Hassan, subhanAllah. In a hadith of Tirmidhi on the authority of Anas ibn Malik. And again, Anas ibn Malik is the servant of the Messenger of God. Uh, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he was a carrier of the Na'lain. He used to carry the, the sandals of the Prophet wasallam. The Prophet wasallam one time, he said that when he was visiting Jannah on Laylatul Isra wal Mi'raj, he saw this huge palace in Jannah. He said, yeah, Jibreel, whose palace is this? And Jibreel said, a young man from the Quraysh. He said, who, who? And, the, and Jibreel said, Umar. So the Prophet ﷺ, he went to get a closer look at this palace. And a woman walked past him in front of him in Jannah. Who was this woman? Umm Sulaim, the mother of Anas ibn Malik. The Prophet ﷺ, according to his hadith in Tirmidhi, he goes out in the middle of the night, the middle of the night, to do something. Anas is following him. And he sees Abu Bakr Siddiq in the middle of the night. And he says, Ma ja abika, ya Abu Bakrin, what has brought you out, O Abu Bakr? At this hour, what has brought you out? And Abu Bakr said, Listen to his response. He said, Kharaj tu min bayti ke andura wajha Rasulillah. I left my house on the chance that I might see the face of the Prophet. And then his wife, Umm Ruman, she says, Abu Bakr Siddiq in his house, he shouts, وَشَوْقَ وَشَوْقَ how much is my shawq, how much is my desire or longing just to see the face of the Prophet ﷺ. This is his best friend. He sees him every day, but in the night he can't see him. This is the type of love we're talking about. This is the type of love we have to cultivate for the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ said, Al-waylu liman la yarani yawm al qiyamah He said, uh, ﷺ, he said, woe to the one who won't see me on the day of judgment. And Aisha said, radiallahu anha, who's not going to see you on the yawm al-qiyamah? He said, man dhukirtu indahu, falam yusalli alayya. The one when I mentioned in his presence, he doesn't even bother to send benedictions upon me. So we have to say, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we, we said at the beginning of the khutbah, this verse was revealed in Sha'ban, that Allah and his angels, they send blessings of peace upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah is enough. Allah is enough, right? The angels is an addition. But this is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is doing. Sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. So there is a, there's a command here. Two commands by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to emulate 
this action that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is doing himself. One lahda with the Prophet وسلم, will change lives. It's transformative. But people leaving the religion because they haven't experienced the Prophet وسلم. So that was so long ago. The Prophet is not here anymore. But his, his message is here. The sunnah is here. The hadith are here. The Quran is here. We can have that relationship with him وسلم. We have to engage our sources. We have to seek out the mashayikh and sit with them and understand how he was وسلم. One instant with him can change your life. And after that, you'll never leave the religion. One time the Prophet وسلم, was sitting on the road and he was eating some food with some uh, companions and a young woman approaches him and she had a lot of uh, courage, jur'ah, a lot of courage. She walks up to the Prophet وسلم, and she says, give me something to eat with your own hand. And the Prophet وسلم, la yarudu sa'ilan, he never uh, refused a request. So he says, fine, he wants to give her something. And then she says, put it into my mouth with your hands. And he says, okay. And then, he's, and then she says, no, take the food out of your mouth and put it into my mouth. <laughs> so the Prophet وسلم, he did that. Because in the, the morsel of food, in one luqma of food, there's the saliva of the Prophet ﷺ. And the saliva of the Prophet ﷺ has healing qualities. You know, on the day of Khaybar, the Sahaba were at Khaybar. For two weeks, they couldn't even breach the first fortress of the Bani Israel at Khaybar. So one night at Salat al-Isha, the Prophet ﷺ, he says, tomorrow I'm going to give the liwa. I'm going to give the standard to a man. Yuhibbullah wa rasulahu wa yuhibbuhullah wa rasuluhu. I'm going to give the standard to a man who loves Allah and His Messenger and is beloved by Allah and His Messenger. So the next morning at Salatul Fajr, the Prophet ﷺ, after he gives his taslim, he says, bring the liwa, bring the standard, bring the flag. He takes it and he puts it into the ground. And he looks out in the front row and all the men are clamoring. And he says, Aina Ali, where is Ali? And they say, he has uh, aphthalmia, he has ramad in his eyes, his inflammation, he can barely see. Don't worry about him, pick one of us. And he says, no, bring Ali. They had to lead him by the hand. And he comes and he lies down in front of the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet takes some of his saliva and rubs it over his eyes like this. And he was cured. Subhanallah. This is from the Mu'ajizat. We believe in Mu'ajizat. There was a false prophet at the time named Musaylama al kaddab from Bani Hanifa, who was claiming to be a prophet also. And one of his companions came to Musaylama and said, you know, this man in Medina, Muhammad wasallam, he can perform this miracle. Can you do it? So they brought him a man with an inflammation in his eye. So Musaylama takes his own cursed saliva and he puts it on the man's eye. And then they saw that this eye is starting to get inflamed. This is called ihana. This is khawarik al-adat. This is a miracle. But it's a miracle that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will manifest in order to humiliate a false prophet. So the Prophet wasallam. And speaking of love, we'll get back to the story of the young woman in a minute. But we said he loves Allah and his messenger, he's beloved to Allah and his messenger. Another hadith in Muslim by Anas, that the Prophet ﷺ, he was giving khutbah, and a man stood up in the middle of the khutbah, because the Prophet ﷺ was talking about a sa'a, the hour. And he said, Ya Rasulullah, mata sa'a, when is the hour? And the Prophet ignored him, because it's a khutbah. But after the prayer, immediately after the taslim, he said, Aina sa'il. Where is the one who asked the question? And he said, Ana, Ya Rasulullah. And he said, you asked me about the, the sa'a, wa madha adadta laha. What did you prepare for the hour? And the man said, nothing special. I do my fard, I pray, I, do my, I give my zakah, I fast during Ramadan, but nothing in addition. Illa an yuhibbullah wa rasulah. Except I love Allah and His Messenger. And the Prophet ﷺ said something to him, that Anas commented on that he'd never been happier in his life on that, uh, that, that instant when he heard this comment from the Prophet ﷺ. What did he say? Anta ma'aman ahbabt. You will be with the one whom you love. Because Anas knew that he loved the Prophet ﷺ. He knew that he loved the Prophet ﷺ. So anyway, this young woman, she said, give me the luqma that's in your mouth and put it into my mouth. So that's what he did ﷺ. And then they said that after she ate that, it came into her body and she digested it, that there was nobody in Medina more modest than that woman was. There was nobody, there was no woman in Medina more modest than that woman. One instant with the Prophet wasallam. A man came to the Prophet wasallam. said, Ya Rasulullah, uh, I'll do anything you say, but I love to fornicate. I love to commit zina. 
And there's different types of zina. The zina of the eyes. Many of the shabab and many adults. Major issues with this zina of the eyes because of internet and things like that. Major issues. Dividing families. Splitting families. Right? So this man said, I'll do anything you want. I'll do anything you want, but I have to commit zina. So the Prophet ﷺ, he said, can you imagine somebody doing that with your mother or your sister or your aunt? He said, oh, I would hate it. And then the Prophet ﷺ, he put his blessed hand on the man's chest just for a moment. And the man said, when I came to the Prophet ﷺ, I loved zina more than anything. And when I left his, uh, um, left his company, nothing was more detestable to me than fornication. One instant with the Prophet ﷺ. So we need to get to know him in closing. We need to get to know him. Who is the Prophet ﷺ? Imam Ibrahim al-Laqani, he says in a Jawhar al-Tawheed, he says, وَأَفْضَلُ الْخَلْقِ عَلَى الْإِطْلَاقِ نَبِيُّنَا فَمِلْعَنِ الشِّقَاقِ This is part of our aqidah, that the greatest of creation, the absolute best of creation, is the Prophet ﷺ. So steer clear of dissent. He's, his words reverberated in the highest assemblies. The words of the Prophet ﷺ. When he was given khutbah one time, there was no roof on the masjid in those days. And there was a famine, and things were dying. A man came into the masjid, our crops are dying, our animals, our livestock are dying, there's a drought, there's a famine. Supplicate to your Lord. The Prophet ﷺ raised his hands, and before he dropped his hands, his beard was soaking wet in rain water, and there was flooding in the masjid. And then the same man comes in next week and says, everything is flooded. Pray to your Lord to help us. The Prophet ﷺ, he moved his hand like this and said, Hawalaina wala alayna. Around us, not above us. This was witnessed by several, several sahaba. They looked up, they saw the clouds were moving when he would move his hands. His words would echo, reverberate in the highest assemblies. One time the Prophet ﷺ, he was sitting with Jibreel ﷺ. They're having a conversation. And the Prophet ﷺ, in the midst of the conversation, just sort of in passing, he says to Jibreel, you know, my family and I, we haven't eaten food in several days. And suddenly there's a hadda, there's a booming sound that comes from the heavens. And it startled the Prophet ﷺ. And he said, is it Yawm Al-Qiyamah? Ya Jibreel, is it Day of Judgment? And Jibreel ﷺ, he said, no. He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because of what you just said, has deployed an angel from the heavens. And the angel landed on the earth. And some traditions say it was as large as the Kaaba. And the angel asked the Prophet ﷺ, do you want to be a servant prophet or a king prophet? It's your choice. Do you want to be a servant prophet or a king prophet? And the Prophet ﷺ, he said, I choose ubudiyah. I, cho I choose servitude. I choose servitude. There are some people who believe a lot of Muslims fall into this. The prosperity gospel. That we need to be rich, we need to have money. There's nothing wrong with being wealthy. Right? The Prophet ﷺ said that لا بأس بالغناء لمن, لمن اتق الله عز وجل. There's nothing wrong with the rich man as long as he has taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But he also says every ummah has a, a fitna. Wa fitna to ummati al mal. And wealth, it could be a fitna. It's the fitna of my ummah. So we have to be careful not to love the world more than we love al akhirah. So this is a fitna. Right? But the Prophet ﷺ, he chose ubudiyah. So we have to be careful. We shouldn't judge somebody based on their bank account or how much money they have or where they live, how big their house is. That's no indication of their standing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Khayr al Khalkillah is the Prophet ﷺ, and he had to tie rocks around his stomach ﷺ, to stave off hunger pangs. Three months go by, there's no fire coming from his house. He's not eating meat in three months. Habibullah. Something happens to us, our car breaks down. We, oh Allah, why did you do it? My Mercedes broke down. I can't believe it. I'm having a bad hair day. You know, uh, I didn't get uh, whatever, all of my insurance money back, something like this, something so uh, laughable. Whereas the Prophet said, look at his life, a life of struggle, but a life of iman, a life of tawakkul upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to implement. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, bless all of us and give us a close relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and give us ma'rifah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the wisdom and the teaching of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fa astaghfiru innahu huwa al-ghafur rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. 
wa ala sadatina wa immatina Abi Bakar Umar Uthman wa Ali wa radiyallahu ta'an ashabu rasulillahi ajma'in yaqulu Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fi kitab al-aziz ba'dan aqulu a'udhu billahi minash shaytan al-rajim inna allahu wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi ya ayuhaladina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli ala muhammadin wa ala ala muhammadin kama salli ala ibrahim wa ala ala ibrahim fil alamin inna ka hamidun majid Allahumma barik ala muhammadin wa ala ala muhammadin kama barakta ala ibrahim wa ala ala ibrahim fil alamin inna ka hamidun majid Allahumma inna nas'aluka bi nuri wajhika al-kareem wa bihaqqiq alayk husn al-khatima inda al-mamat lana wa li ahbabina wa li jami' al-muslimin يا ارحم الراحمين اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت وبارك لنا فيما اعطيت وقنا شر ما قضيت ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد اذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمه انك انت الوهاب ربنا اتنا في الدنيا حسنه والاخره حسنه وقنا عذاب النار لا اله الا انت سبحانك ان كنا من الظالمين لا اله الا انت سبحانك ان كنا من الظالمين لا اله الا انت سبحانك ان كنا من الظالمين ربنا ظلمنا انفسنا وان وان لم تكفر لنا وترحمنا لنا كنانا من الخاسرين يا مقلب القلوب والابصار ثبت قلوبنا على دينك يا مقلب القلوب والابصار ثبت قلوبنا على طاعتك the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said in a sound hadith he said that during the month of sha'ban allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during the month of during the night of nisfu sha'ban that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he looks at his creation and he forgives all the muslims except except the one except the one who is committing shirk or the one who is mushahin the Muslim who has an issue with another Muslim for a dunyawi reason. They don't fall under the amnesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. So let's forgive our fellow human beings in general, inshallah ta'ala, during this month. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Muhammadin wa la alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Inna Allah ya'muru bil adil wal ihsani wa ita'idhi al-qurba wa yanha'ani al-fahshai wal-mukari wal-baghi. Ya'udhukum la'allakum jathakkaroon wa aqimu salah.